Champs, it's time for our post-game show. Here from Orlando. The shadows lengthening here at Crooked Cat. And there have been plenty of low scores on the scorecards today. Welcome back inside our Live Golf studio. Boy, I think Dom called it a clinic put on by Brooks yeah. today. He was very impressive for the second straight day, 265s. Yeah, and, and could have been lower on, on both days. Yeah. No question. Yeah, he had a lot of putts yesterday, didn't drop early. And then bogey free today is pretty impressive, but uh, there were still a few left out there in his mind, I'm sure. I don't think he's going to argue with his ultimate score, though. That's pretty good. Fancy some Brooks Kepka highlights? Why not? Yeah, why not? Well, uh, round two. His smash team are also leading the way in the team competition by two strokes. So it's a very healthy state of affairs for Brooks. His second shot at the second. He teed off at two today. And his second shot into the seventh as well was pretty special. Just like Dom said, every club coming off dead center of the club face, just flushing them all, hitting his line almost every time with the full swing and quite often with the flat stick. Along the live line for Birdie at nine. This is his second of the tenth. Doesn't overcomplicate things with his swing, with his approach to golf. It doesn't appear to anyway. You really don't know what goes on in that mind, but yeah, a little uphill bunker shot here. Thinking about making it, almost does. For the birdie at 14 for Brooks Kempke. So 65 and 65, and that means a combined 12 under par for Brooks Kepka so far, heading into Championship Sunday with a three-stroke lead over overnight leader Sebastian Munoz, who followed his 62 with a 71 today. And Mito Pereira there or thereabouts as well. We've got quite a competition in the uh, team uh, contest. Smash 26 under par, Torque 24 under par, and the Cleeks 21 under. We're hoping to chat to Richard Bland uh, in a few moments' time as well. So all to play for, and as we know, it can change very quickly in the team competition. So yeah. Smash will feel good about life, but the job is far from done. Yeah, well, I, I got my eye on the four aces, as as uh, Troy was saying. They make a they make a nice third round charge quite often, and they're seven back, which counting three shots on a course like this, where we've seen all kinds of fireworks and and problems, can happen in a heartbeat. Right. Yeah, my range goats. Uh... <laughs> Not great. <laughs> Let's take a look at some of the uh, team highlights then. Smash 26 under par. Brooks leading the way. Again, his second shot at two. Matthew Wolf. He's contributing. His second shot at 18. His score counted today. He was three under par. He's seven under overall. Jason Kokrak was three under yesterday, didn't count, but three under today does. That was for birdie at 18. Brooks again, second shot at seven. he make a birdie three there. And his second at 10. So impressive all day today, all events so far, Brooks Kepka. Jason Kokrak will end the team highlights with a couple of highlights from Jason for birdie at seven. Hills that one in nicely, and then for birdie at nine. So let's check the team leaderboard as we head into Championship Sunday. Smash with a two-stroke lead over Torque, who have just kept with them for the most part. Cleeks, 21 under par, on the podium at the moment, ahead of the four aces, who are sure to finish strongly tomorrow. They are two back. Speaking of the Cleeks... He just gave it a fist pump when, yeah. he saw, when he saw the team in third place, there Richard Bland. Richard Bland looking very smart in the clicks gear there. Yeah, Must yeah. Be, you score didn't count today. I know, yeah. Shows kind you the of, strength uh, of the team performance. Yeah, let the team down a little bit today. Um, yeah, the back nine was pretty tough for me. Didn't have my best stuff. And, um, yeah, the wind 
sort of picked up a little bit that last nine holes and so uh yeah it was a bit of a grind on the back so but yeah the boys came through Laurie and G Mac were great today and uh yeah it's nice to see Burn uh bounce back uh from a disappointment of yesterday but uh yeah it, it's just good that we're in there uh you know we've we've had a tough couple of first tournaments yeah. but uh you know, I, I, we needed this week just, you know, to boost the team a little bit. You know, we're, we we got great morale. We're, we're all good friends. But, you know, we're having dinner most nights. And uh, so it, it's good to, you know, sort of build on yesterday as well. That was, that, I think today was really important. So uh, hopefully we can uh, get, get in the thick of it tomorrow. First of all, I'm um, sorry, Arlo. No, go for it. Yeah, uh, we'll first ahead. of all, kudos to you for coming and spend time with us in our post-game show after what was a disappointing back nine for you. Was today a day uh, that was maybe a product of it didn't you and and uh, Munoz specifically didn't seem to really get anything gelling out there. Um, you had a decent start, but then the three bogeys on the back uh, mm. offset. It was did the wind just wear you guys down a little bit? Um. Yeah, it, it you know had like uh, the, the back nine just played completely different to. To yesterday yeah, 180 the, right? yeah it was a complete 180 yeah. um yeah like uh yeah 10 yesterday i think we're hitting like six signs in and we're hitting gap wedge today um and then like on on 14 i just i think i just hit the uh, sorry 15 i hit the down slope of the bunker and i'm in the hazard at the back yeah you know, off actually you know what i'm thinking is in the air is looking like quite a good shot in, in all fairness you're almost probably trying to hit it in the trap yeah is, is almost a is a good leave there um uh, yeah, that's kind of how it went for me on on the back nine. But yeah, the last year, instead of hitting like wedging yesterday, we're hitting your arm and arm between a five and a six iron. Yeah. So uh, that's how different it's played, and, it, and it's it's really kind of dried it out as well. Well, it's not like you shot 90 out there. You did yeah. have plenty of highlights. Yeah, there were some highlights out there. Talk us through these. An eagle put it four in. Yeah, two. yeah. This was uh, just just kind of get it down there. You know, so you give yourself a good look for, for a birdie. So uh, it was just all about the pace and, yeah, managed to judge that one really nice. Then for par at seven. Yeah, I, I the, the second shot I hit in there just out the rough was probably about a yard short from being really good. Um, but it was the nice that the, the bunk shot was on the upslope, so it wasn't that too bad. And then a really good bunk shot on on nine to there. Uh, managed to knock that one in to get out in two under. So, um yeah, off like half a shank with the most... Um, half a shank? Second. Yeah, I, okay. I was trying to hit like a real <laughs> low six and leaned on it big time. And yeah, it looks like it couldn't miss from where I was because I'm below the level of the green. And uh, it's, it's kind of weird. I've been practicing that shot a little bit this week. So uh, it's nice to see it paid off. But hold on. What about yesterday? Because you double bogeyed <laughs> yeah. your first hole, which was 15. Yeah. And then went nine under thereafter. Yeah. You were on absolute fire yesterday. Yeah, it's just one of those that, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, I kind of just walk into the 16th. All right, okay, there's the bad hole out the way, right? Let's just get your head down and, uh, and get stuck in. And I think, I think the, the, the big thing for me was birdie at 16 mm. um, to get that straight back, uh, especially when you know that 17 was playing downwind and that was going to be a real birdie opportunity so I, th I think the real the bonus there was the birdie at 16 just to kind of right okay because you then you feel like right if I can get birdie at 17 you're right you're back to square one and off you go and then yeah I, I, I played the great uh, the front nine absolutely great 29 on the front nine. yeah uh, and and missed a couple of good chances as well yeah I missed it from about six feet at um second hit it close in there and yeah. I think I, there was another somewhere else where I hit it Sort of fairly close, but didn't make it. And you eagled 14 to, to end your yeah, day. Yeah, so it was a bit you? of a bookend yeah. double eagle. <laughs> it's, uh, so today. talk to me a little bit in a moment about Laurie Cantor, because I know you got quite emotional in Miami at the end <laughs> of last season. We'll get to that in a second, but here are the team highlights. So this is Laurie's birdie put at five. He's oh, eight man. under par for yeah. the competition. He's in for Martin Keimer, your injured captain at the moment, and he's taking advantage at the moment and making the most of his opportunity. Then Graham McDowell for birdie at... 17 Laurie for birdie at seven McDowell again here for birdie at 18 and you're really as a team backing up a solid first day yeah well yeah Laurie's yeah in my opinion he's probably one of the best ball strikers out here you won't see anyone hit a golf ball better than Laurie and 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 G's probably one of the best putters um yeah playing foursomes with him in Miami yeah I, I've never seen pace putting like it, it it's it's insanely good how his pace pattern from 30, 40 feet, it's just, it looks like it's going to go in as soon as it's left the blade. And, 
when you've got that kind of talent, um, it, it kind of makes it a little easy. But yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased for Laurie. He's uh, yeah, he's in, he's in a bit of a sort of tough spot with his golf. He obviously he's not got a full spot out here. Yeah. He lost his card last year in in Europe. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I'm really pleased for him. He's, he's in that he's, sort of no man's land at the moment. But again, all he can do is play very well, and that's do. what he's doing. Because I remember back in Miami last year when you beat Torque, or mm. Torque as they were then, in the quarterfinals, and you narrowly lost, didn't you, in the semi-finals to the four aces? Yeah. And Laurie beat Patrick, Patrick Reed, Reed, but yeah. in the end, ultimately, he ended just points short, didn't one, he? One, one point. point short of yeah. automatic qualification. You know, but Laurie Cantor is out there now and he is taking advantage of his uh, opportunity let's send it down to don belay who have you got with you don i got andy ogletree with me andy 69 70 how are you enjoying your second live event yeah it's been it's great to be back out here um i played in the first event in london so it's been a long time since i played in one of these so uh off to kind of a slow, slow start but uh we're looking forward to tomorrow hopefully we can take it deep you're a very different player from London. You've won twice on the international series. I mean, this is just, a, and you're free of injury too. For sure, yeah. I mean, I think uh, a lot of the, a lot of the problem in London was I couldn't really swing because my back was hurting so bad. My, my left hip. I was coming back from hip surgery, so still wasn't really trusting that. So, um, I think people were starting to get to see, you know, what I can do when I'm healthy, and um, I hope to hope to get more opportunities out here and be able to prove myself a little more. Can you show us what you're working on with your, yeah, the tees yeah. in the ground? I know you're a beautiful putter. What I love about your stroke is you keep the blade very low to the ground. Is that something you work on? Is that what yeah, the, these so tees are about? Basically, I'm just trying to, after, before and after the round, I just kind of want to calibrate my eyes to see what the straight line is. So I make sure my putter head is lined up down that line, down the center. And then I try to not hit these tees. If I can do that, my, my putting stroke's in pretty good place. So yeah, keep it low to the ground and uh, kind of straight back, straight through from, from here to here is what you want. Obviously, you're gonna have a little bit of an arc the longer the stroke gets, but from, the, from this short range, I don't want much of an arc. Well, it looks pretty good yeah. to me. <laughs> Thanks for your time, Andy. Keep right. practicing. Over to you, Troy. I'm with Brendan Steele of the High Flyers. You didn't know, but you're 100% in fairways today, which is much better than yesterday. But what were you saying? You were surprised by that? Well, I'm surprised by that because I didn't play very well today, and I hit a lot of bad iron shots, I guess. It was mostly, it should be mostly on the irons, I guess, in that case. But since I didn't have a very good score and I didn't feel like I hit the ball very well, uh, I was very surprised by that. But I have a little go-to specialty shot that I have to lean on when things are really bad, and I went to that today, and it worked. And that was just off the tee. Can you show us what that is or describe yeah, it for us? Yeah, so usually when I'm swinging really poorly and I'm hitting a lot of hooks, I've got a really strong grip, and, and so I get the club kind of going this way and flipping over and hitting it way left. So in order to counteract that, I have this really low tee that I, that I play. I tee it down like that, and then it makes me get on top of it, and I hit kind of a low cut. And because of the way the wind was today and the setup of the holes, I was able to kind of use that on every hole, basically. So I had that shot going pretty good. So it just is good medicine for my swing and tries to neutral out what I do poorly. Because there's a lot of amateurs or even just, you know, other players that are playing out there that would change their grip rather than teeing it lower or trying something else. But it's nice yeah. to see that you're getting rid of the <laughs> spine tilt, right? You're getting rid of that I, right I'm, spine tilt. I'm trying to, yeah. Yeah, it's been, been a struggle the last two days, but um, that's the one shot that I seem to be able to hit at the moment. <laughs> Can we see it again? Yeah. So the, in theory, the lower you tee it, the harder it should be to hit it left. Because, I mean, if you think about like trying to hit driver off the deck, like it's hard to, hard to draw it. You know, exactly. it kind of wants to go straight or, or slice. So if I tee it down like this, it keeps me moving forward a little bit better. Instead of hitting up on it, now you're hitting down. Yeah, and into instead and of through. kind of sliding and flipping this way and hitting up on it and having the club flip over. So now so. how are you going to, what is the problem with your irons today, you were That's saying? That's a great is it the question. Same now, thing? if I knew that, <laughs> <laughs> because the problem is in, in the right to left wind, I have a tendency to hit it way left right now. I've been doing it the last couple of weeks. And it doesn't matter if I try to hold it against it or if I try to ride the wind. 
just seems to be going way left. So that's why I came over here to try to figure it out. And I was trying to get the angle that would have it uh, where I've been struggling. Well, can we see you hit a couple irons? Yeah, you can. <laughs> <laughs> So that's better because I got the start line further right. So I've been having trouble with the start line mostly. I was trying to see if we had a playback on your swing. Yeah, beautiful. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, no worries. Oh, wait, look, we do. We got it, we got it. All right, let's check out your swing in slow-mo. Okay. So you're getting the club back in front. Oh, this is your driver. Yeah, so that's the low tee. So it, it should kind of neutral my path and I should be like more neutraled out on uh, my attack angle as well. So you can see how low it takes off there. And so also when your shoulder tilt, correct? Right, because yeah. you're not as crunched on your right side? Yeah, exactly. So it just kind of inverts everything that I do poorly. So usually what happens is when I'm swinging really bad, I can go to that, which is what I did today. <laughs> well, what can we expect to see from you tomorrow? Well, I, apparently if I keep driving it like that and using that shot, I need to just hit some good iron shots. So hopefully I can figure that out here and then uh, maybe I can shoot a decent score. All right, well, we'll leave you to it. Thank you so much. All right, thanks, All right over Troy. to you, Sue Ann. Well, I've got Jason here with me practicing a little putting. Jason, great round today in these tough, windy conditions. Can you talk us through your round first? Um, I struck it very nicely. Uh, my swing coach, Drew, and I uh, found something on the range yesterday uh, with my left knee. It's just, uh, I struck the ball very solid today. A couple quality up and downs, one kind of miscue on the last hole, but other than that, I played very nicely, made some nice putts. Um, pleased with the round, especially with how windy it got and a little bit, uh, the greens got a little baked out later, later in the day. Well, Team Smash, you guys are in the lead right now. What's going to be the chat in the locker room? Uh, same as yesterday, a little confidence boost. We're playing good. I mean, we're, we're a good quality team. And, uh, you know, we go out there and we're, we're starting to fire on, uh, you know, some of the cylinders that we have. So uh, I think we go out there and just uh, stick to our game plan. Uh, we're all playing great golf. So um, I think uh, me, Wolfie, and uh, Chase need to step up and uh, shoot a low one tomorrow for uh, BK. And he's playing some nice golf. So. Yeah, he sure is. Now, you are practicing putting. Can yeah. you just talk us through what you're doing here? Well, I mean, uh, a lot of the times uh, when I get off, the, the my eye line gets off. So if I line up straight, I, my, I might think I'm straight, but I might be lined up on the right edge. So I tend to look, uh, my, I tend to go line up a little bit further right than I should. So I get here and kind of retrain my eye what, what is straight. And then I'll go off to another putt that doesn't have a chalk line to make sure that my eye line's straight. So I try to hit a couple of putts after the round uh, on the, the straight line, and then a, a couple putts uh, right edge to a ball out, and the same with the left edge to the ball out left. All right, well, let's see a few, shall we? No pressure. Oh, yeah, no pressure. <laughs> I also noticed that you like kind of keeping that putter head quite close to the low and close to the yeah, ground. I have a tendency to keep it too low going back and come up on the way through. Uh, D-Rob always tells me, he's like, no, low on the way through. Don't worry about what you do on the way back. All right, let's keep watching a few. I remember when I was playing, um, not as good as you, obviously, but uh, the chalk line was one of my favorite things just because it's such a, it's also such a great confidence booster. Yeah. Well, it's a great confidence booster because, I mean, you're here to retrain your eye and hit putts and more repetition than, you know, you're the chalk line was a little windy out here, so it's blowing it a little bit off to the left, but it's just to train your eye to hit a couple putts and to get a little confidence. You're not, I'm not really, you know, going to rep out, you know, 100 putts out here, but I come out here, I hit three footers, four footers, five footers, and then uh, a couple long putts for speed and, and well, I keep going. Well, what's the game plan tomorrow? What do you think are some of the keys to really just coming out and playing a good round tomorrow? I think just giving myself a lot of birdie opportunities. Uh, no mental mistakes, hitting it in spots you're not supposed to. Um, 
I, I'm, I'm putting nice. I'm starting to uh, make a whole lot of putts. Uh, so I'd like to give myself a lot of, you know, 15, 18 footers tomorrow when uh, the pins are tough and, and go at some of the pins that are accessible. All right. Thanks for the chat. Good luck tomorrow. I'll leave you to practice. Back to you guys. Thank you, Sue Ann. And thank you to Troy before as well. We've seen um, two tape to tape winners in the team competition so far, Jerry, with the crushes and the fireballs in Mexico and in Arizona. And Smash looked to be doing something similar here in Orlando. Yeah, I think a lot has to do with if Wolf continues his fine play that he has done through two rounds, the way he's swinging, I don't see it going another way. Brooks Kepka is obviously just playing superb golf, leading the way by three shots. Uh, Chase Kepka had a good start to his day yesterday and has kind of slid back gradually since. A lot depends on him and Kokrak what they do, but Kokrak, two great rounds in a row. I like their chances very, very much, but I like Torquay's chances a lot. And, I mean, sentimentally, you kind of have to root for the cliques a little bit, and especially Laurie Cantor. If he had just that unthinkable day tomorrow, what that would mean yeah. to potentially his career long term. Yeah, and you can see how uh, chuffed Richard was with uh, the cliques uh, performance so far, even though his score didn't count today. You mentioned Torquay, Jerry. Let's get to some of their highlights today. They are two shots behind Smash. They had their first podium finish uh, in Live Golf in Mexico a couple of events ago. This is Mito Pereira, who turned 28 yesterday. His second shot at the third. And he is going great guns in the individual competition as well on eight under par. Four off our leader, Brooks Kepka. David Pooj for birdie at 11. And then his tee shot at 15. Ah, uh, yeah. He quietly played very nicely today, did David Pooj. Not many guys were able to get it close there. That might have been best in show for the entire day at 15. Brutal hole. Waco Neiman is the team captain from Santiago, Chile. That was for birdie at 14, and then a birdie put here at the first. And we'll round things off with Mito Pereira again. Well, this is the one thing he did not do very well in round one, hitting 17 of 18 greens, but finishing second to last in putting. This is the toughest putt he might have had all day, right on the live line and found the center of the cup. So Torquay, well, they like the beach. Uh, <laughs> the beach plus, I'm guessing, I don't know, Torquinta, tournament golf, who knows? Uh, is a great combination, good combination. Buena combination. Oh, That's good why there was so much. That's why there's so much Majestics hey. merch in there. They've gone for a signing session in the merch tent. They were third overnight, the Majestics. They've slipped a little behind the podium spots, but the lines are pretty long for the mighty Majestics. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Oh. Kids, they're, they're going to send the kid with the range goat shirt. Ah, okay. <laughs> oh, but he's got a majestic pin flag. No one would be happier than Bubba Watson, given the uh, shots he was firing towards the majestics a little earlier. But someone's uh, asking them to sign a range goat's bit of paraphernalia. I think Bubba versus Ian Poulter in a practical joke contest would be a pretty good match. Don't yeah, there we go. He's just noticed Ian the range goat's T-shirt. No, they hadn't sold out to him, sadly. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Sam Horsfield went well today, followed by his grandmother Muriel, 87 years of age from Manchester, England, who's watching him play as a pro for the very first time. He moved to Florida some 15 years ago. Lee Westwood, 44 pro wins. Henrik Stenson, former Open champion, of course. And the Majestics. That's a... Uh, a team have really got it together Good job. All right. off the course as well as on it. And you saw him Polter pointing to the Range Goats t-shirt. The great access provided by the guys to the fans here, those that have stayed beyond the end of the second you know, round here. I get, I get this harass so much for being such a cheerleader. People accuse me for for live golf. The fact is, you don't find this anywhere else right here. You just don't do it. The fact that they start at the same time and finish at the same time gives us unprecedented access to them. They don't all have to say yes. We don't need them all to say yes, but so many of them do. They, they all feel invested in the product.
Well, that young fella's done well on the autograph front, hasn't he, today? Pretty cool lid as well. Troy, we'll send it back down to you. Speaking of range goats, I'm with Taylor Gooch. Thanks for talking with us. Yeah. All right, what are you working on? 200 today, pretty good? Yeah, uh, just just some drivers. Uh, you know, we're trying to work on getting um, getting a little bit shorter up at the top of my backswing, and uh, when you're trying to hit it long and hard, that's that could be challenging. So it's a you know just a little post round practice. Well, you're practicing into the wind rather than on a side wind. Is that on purpose? Yeah, I, uh, if, if we get a right to left wind, it makes things really easy. Uh, and so I want to be more straight into it so that you can't fake it. Okay, let's see you hit some. Okay. So did you tee it lower today? Uh, on some is shots, this your yeah. Normal? Um, but, but, you know, obviously when it's downwind, you got to tee high and let it fly. like that one. Were there certain holes out there that you felt you could be more aggressive today since the wind switch from yesterday? Yeah, a couple of the uh, tee balls a little bit easier today, like 12. You know, not having to hit a driver into the wind or cross wind made that tee ball a little bit easier. Uh, but made the par fives more difficult. Um, I haven't really looked at the um, the scores yet, but the, the par fives were tougher to score today for sure with, you know, not having as many downwind, you know. Yeah, well, we actually got your swing with the tracer. Do you want to see it real quick and check it out? Come on, guys. Come on, guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Tell me what you guys see. A little bit of a close stance. I see really straight. Look at that ball fly. Ooh. Yeah, that's pretty straight. That's getting where you want to be pointing down the line. Yeah. Trying to shorten it up, but also get it down the line at the top. Yeah. We need more like that. <laughs> okay, Straight let's ones. see another one of those. <laughs> I was say that was a little bit longer. Do you? It had a little bit of a draw. Did you like that? Are we okay with that? Yeah, I was trying team? to trying to hit a little bit of a draw. My my miss is when I start hitting kind of low cuts and and I start getting steep and and overcutting them. And so when I get on the range, I'm trying to hit kind of some you know push draws almost, you know, uh, just to kind of get away from some of my bad habits. Do you tend to play the ball both ways when you're on the course? Yeah, um, with irons, especially with driver, I hit predominantly cuts, uh, but you know, I still want to try to be able to work balls both ways, especially when it's windy like this. I don't want to just hit something that the wind's going to take it way offline, so I, I like to kind of move it into the wind, you know. I love that. What do you see in his swing right now? Yeah, he's one of the best iron players there is in the world, and to be a little bit steep on irons is a great thing, and so just trying to offset that on the drivers, like you said, a little bit of a push not so down on it. It's really easy to start doing that on a driver. Growing up in Oklahoma where he's used to hitting a flat shot, flat you know trajectory, it's easy to maybe just barely get too down on it in these heavy winds. So just trying to be a little bit shorter and down the line at the top like his iron swing and it ends up allowing him to be a little bit more shallow coming down actually for him. Another beautiful shot. Well, thank you so much, Taylor. Yeah, thank you. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you, thank you. Great stuff, Troy. The access we get to these yeah, yeah. guys on the yeah. practice range afterwards is just phenomenal, isn't it? It's not just afterwards. It's early in the week. You see yeah. all those features we roll in during the show. They, uh, they're they all pretty darn cool about it. There's there's a few guys this week who are a little tense going into next week as well and keeping that on their mind. But for the most part, it's uh, it's pretty unprecedented, as you said, and as, as is this. Signing autographs is part of being somebody, a role model and a star in your uh, respective field. But... Uh, yeah, I think they, and, well, those guys enjoy this as much as anything else. Well, I noticed that Bryson DeChambeau of the uh, Crushers was on the practice range for two hours last night. That's now, not does unusual. That, does that speak to his obsessional nature? Yeah, that's not unusual at all. I mean, DeChambeau, they've had to turn on the lights on the putting green for him <laughs> at professional golf tournaments on a regular basis because he, he's absolutely tireless in his pursuit of perfection in a game that you simply cannot master. Well, these teams are chasing hearts and minds here. And the Majestics are putting in a good shift in the merch tent, signing autographs for those that have stayed. Good for them. But Brooks Kepka has a three-stroke lead going into the final day. 
He's 12 under par, Sebastian Munoz is 9 under, Mito Pereira 8 under, Patrick Reed. Don't rule him out, he's 8 under par with Laurie Cantor as well. We hope you've enjoyed our coverage today. 18 holes to play. Join us at 1 p.m. Eastern tomorrow for Championship Sunday. Can Brooks Kepka go into the Masters on the back of an historic second victory on the Live Golf Tour from the entire team here in Orlando? Thanks for watching. Join us tomorrow, 1 o'clock Eastern. Goodbye for now.